Today, we are going to be talking about a series of planetary phenomena that is defining much of the middle of the month of November. The aspects I'm going to be describing today will be felt a little bit wider than this orb I'm going to give, but the exact aspects are going to be from November 10th to November 7th. This series of planetary alignments is going to consist of Mercury-Mars conjunction, the third one of three that has been happening. And then this exact aspect occurs in an exact square to Saturn, which we know is going to be activating the Saturn Uranus square. So then Mercury is going to move ahead and activate Uranus on the 13th, followed by Mars on the 17th. So bing, bang, boom. So let's recap a little bit. Mercury has been conjuncting Mars um, in each consecutive zodiac sign. So our first one was in the sign of Virgo on August 18th. So that would have been telling a tale of critique and discernment. So Mercury, Mars, when those two come together, it's a little volatile. There's like shards of glass on the tongue. There's daggers on the tongue. The words can be confronting. They can be disarming. They're just like kind of jagged and, and perforated. You know, they're just kind of like rough around the edges, unrefined. It's just kind of automatic. It comes out. But what we can get is the truth. So in the sign of Virgo, there was something where we were just like critiquing and, and yeah, there was something about like picking something apart and being completely like critiquing about it then in the sign of libra this was on october 10th this was this exact aspect when mercury was now going retrograde so there was a theme here around um being honest about something for the sake of peacemaking like hey i have to be completely honest it might sound a little confronting it might sound a little hurtful but really that's not my intention because it's in the peacemaking sign of libra it's like really just need to be honest so i can clear the air so that was going on then now here in the sign of scorpio like we tried to be the peacemaker but scorpio is going to tell it like it is so that's the thing here is that scorpio is going to kind of be um you know scorpio's the has a scorpion tail it's venomous and so we have to be really careful with this aspect because mars is of course the stronger planet now and um mars is the warrior those daggers are, um, you know, there's a lot of punch behind that. Um, the thing that Scorpio knows how to do is how to hit at exactly the right moment, i.e. the most vulnerable moment. So Scorpio is one of those that isn't rip roaring, throwing all kinds of daggers around. There's one and it's going to hit exactly where it hurts. It's not going to miss. So that's the thing here is that there's a tendency to withhold. So Mercury, Mars may want to withhold, especially in that square to Saturn. There may be a desire to bite the tongue, but it's like you can't. Like there's just this ammunition behind it, especially as we near closer to Uranus, which will be right away. So it's like, I want to bite my tongue. I don't want to say it because I know it's going to be mean. I know it's going to be hurtful. I know I'm worried about how it'll be received. But here's the thing I'm going to tell you about poison. And we've talked about this before. I'm a big fan of the Medusa myth, as you all know. Um, but the thing with poison is, especially the snake venom, is that when handled with care by a skilled chemist or physician, poison can be used to be um, an anti-venom. It can heal someone. It's, it's the same theory around vaccines. You know, we take the thing that we don't want and we transmute it into a thing that protects us. That's why the Medusa head was um, worn on, on the breastplate of warriors to protect them. Because even though she was like scary and all that um, and venomous, it was it was seen as protection. So that's the thing is that we have this ability to wield this venom. It is a very um, caustic substance. It must be handled with care or it certainly can cause damage. So that's something that we want to be mindful of with this Mercury Mars conjunction is that we may have had this story that we've been working with where um, you know, we pick something apart, we saw it for what it was, and then we try to be peacemaker about it. And maybe it worked, maybe it didn't. And if it didn't, then this is the time we do want to be careful. Um, maybe, maybe sometimes the truth needs to be said. 
You know, sometimes we have to be honest with others about how um, we feel disappointed or hurt, or um, maybe it's for their own good that we need to. So words can be very powerful. And that's something that we need to keep in mind with this Mercury-Mars um, conjunction is that here in the sign of Scorpio, especially the third of three conjunctions, this can be an extremely potent delivery of language, but how we want to steer that effect um, takes a lot of care and consideration because maybe the only way to get through to someone is to hit them where it hurts, um, you know, to really make them think and consider you or to consider the ultimate thing that, um, or to consider themselves, you know, if you're stepping in in a way that is caring for somebody else, um, you know, because Scorpio is one of those signs that has a reputation um, for being vengeful and that sort of thing. And it certainly can, but Scorpio can also be a very potent healer as well. Um, Scorpio is one of those signs that um, it's all or nothing. So it really depends on the intent. What we can focus, what we can promise with this Mercury Mars conjunction in Scorpio is intensity is a spiky punch, but it's all about um, the intention behind it. Is the intention to uplift and ultimately heal? Or is the intention to, to harm and to and to sever, you know? So we really want to be conscientious about how we use our, our words as weapons, how we use our words as tools. Um, we talk about Mars so often as, as a weapon, but weapons are also tools. Like a fork <laughs> is a goddamn weapon, but it also helps us eat. <laughs> so, um, you know, thinking about it that way as words, as tools. So I bet we will see some very cutting art editorials and articles. And Twitter should certainly be an interesting time during this period. Um, I also think that the power of the pen can be um, an ally of the revolution, especially as we're thinking about this workers revolution, where we're coming into fierce negotiations with many of these union leaders and, and the CEOs of these companies. We are in a major workers revolution right now. And I think that the power of language and the power of holding strongly and saying, no, I have been wronged. I deserve to get what I'm worth. Um, and holding strongly to those convictions. Because that's the thing with Scorpio too, is that it's a fixed sign and it feels very strongly and feels very passionately. And it's like this square to Saturn is like, I'm holding back because I don't want to get fired. Um, but then it's like, ultimately, what do I have to lose? Um, so yeah, we're going to see this tension build, especially as Mars then comes into the opposition um, with Uranus because Mercury will be first. So Mercury will be the first to pop off around the 13th. It might be like, yeah, I can't bite my tongue anymore. Here it is. I tried to hold it back or I tried to tone it back or I tried to find other ways um, without behaving in this kind of outbursting kind of way. Um, but I got to find a way to get to get my point across. So I feel like this tension from the Scorpio polarity to Uranus and Taurus is like, I've been holding on to these feelings for a very long time. And it's time, you know, um, Mars's opposition to Uranus is definitely more, um, it's definitely more combustible than anything else, which we'll see lead, um, exact on November 17th, although Mars and Uranus are kind of quick. So we might see some sparks start to fly on the 16th of November um, or sooner if the if the moon happens to activate it, which I'm sure, sure it will because that's a week long um, activation. So the moon will certainly be activating this aspect. So we will get to see that unfold um, Mars opposite Uranus on the 17th, that's one where you want to watch, especially like people on the road, road rage is going to be kind of high. Um, Mars opposite Uranus is just a higher accident prone kind of energy. So you want to be on the, on the defensive. Um, you don't want to be trying to race someone on the freeway if you can help it. Um, so, um, stuff like that. And it's also just like a go. It's just like pull the trigger, just go. Um, it's definitely going to have 
um, themes of revolution, of independence, of sovereignty, of fighting um, for the protection and loyalty of others that are in your circle. Because remember, these fixed signs are incredibly loyal, caring about who's on their team. I was reading about how like the John Deere um, strike is basically like, they are the union members who already have jobs are trying to protect the right of future employees um for some of the bonuses that they get and the benefits that they get and so they're trying to protect the future which is kind of cool like they're getting a lot of credit from from people who are standing by and watching who are like wow they're not just caring about themselves they're caring about the team so that's something that we certainly get from the aquarius influence of saturn in aquarius and um so yeah it should be a really exciting month i think especially as we're getting closer and closer to that lunar eclipse in Taurus, which is going to start a whole new theme of um, like that whole new eclipse theme that we're going to be working with for the next 18 month, we're going to start to see new themes emerge and, and peak around the time of that lunar eclipse. But I really have an interesting feeling about this workers revolution. So we'll just have to see how it plays out. I expect to see more people um, joining the strike, more people getting out and saying, no, we deserve better benefits. We deserve better pay. I have so many personal feelings on that coming from being a hairstylist in an industry where um, it's primarily female dominated and none of us have paid maternity leave. We're all working so hard on our bodies and we get no benefits no medical benefits. So it's like, we deserve that. And maybe universal healthcare is the answer. Um, so anyways, we're going to start to see these themes continue over the month and we'll see what else comes out. Um, but for now, that was your Mercury conjunct Mars activating the Saturn Uranus square astrology shot of the day. I'm Catherine Urban and I will catch you next time. Thank you so much for tuning in with me today. For more astrology in your world, connect with me on all platforms at Astro Catherine. You can also visit me at my website where you can book your one-on-one -on -one astrological consultation where we cover all kinds of predictive and natal techniques. And I so look forward to working with you and I will catch you next time.